Colton Melhoff here from Modern Robotics. I'm going to show you how to read I2C devices connected to your core device interface. The first thing I do before we even go download the software is that I'm going to connect my core device interface to my computer. So here I have my core device interface. All you need to do is connect it by a USB cable. It doesn't need the power distribution module because there's no power going to it. It's just USB power, 5 volts, from your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that to my computer, and there should be a green LED that comes on on the top. And that's so that while I'm downloading the software, the drivers will install. This will be easier in a minute. Go ahead and connect that, and then uh, I have two I2C devices connected. I have a color sensor and integrating gyro, but you can connect any one that you want. Make sure the ground is connected on the right, lines up with that black strip on the core device interface. If you don't have it yet, you'll need to download Core Device Discovery. On our website, uh, you can see black bar on the top. The third tab in is Core Device Discovery. If you don't see it there, it's also going to be on the resources page. So I'm going to click on Core Device Discovery. I'm going to scroll down. Um, if you're on a Windows computer, Windows, Mac, Mac, I'm going to download the Windows version, downloading here. And then when that's done, I'll open it up. I already had it downloaded, so I'm going to double click on Core Device Discovery. Now that's open, and if you don't see any devices, you may have to click Refresh. If it says Refresh Error, that means that the uh, drivers for the device are still being installed. So you may need to click Refresh or wait another minute, be patient with your computer as it installs drivers. Um, but there should be a Core Device interface that shows up here. Then you can click on Advanced. Now, all these sections are super cool onboard LEDs. I can show you this. So I can toggle the blue LED, and it'll make that blue LED or red LED turn on and off. So all these have their own unique uh, uh, usages. Um, I can put my finger on an analog port. You can see how the analog ports are changing. We're just going to talk about the digital I2C ports uh, with I2C commands. We already have a video on changing I2C address. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, go see our other YouTube video. Um, first thing we need to do after we have the I2C devices connected is say refresh list. You can see here how both the sensors showed up. I um, have an integrated gyro and a color sensor. Now if not all your sensors show up, it may be that a couple of your sensors have the same address. Um, by default, modern robotic sensors all ship with different addresses. All the color sensors are the same, all the integrated gyros are the same, blah blah blah. But it may be that if you have a third party sensor, it may have a conflicting address. So um, if you're running into an issue there, just unplug them so you just have one sensor connected at a time and, and see if that may be the case. Now to read the sensors, we're going to go over to the I2C commands. We're going to enter in the address of the sensor that we want to read. I'm going to start with the color sensor, so I'm going to type in 0x3c. Yeah, that's the number. 0x3c, that's the address of a sensor. All the sensors have a plethora of addresses or registers, registers you can read from. Um, and we're going to start by reading the uh, color number of the color sensor. Well, how do we find that? We can find out on the specification for the sensor. So back on the Modern Robotics website, we can go to Sensors. And then on the Sensors page, there are other cool resources. There's also Sensor Documentation. So I'm going to open up Sensor Documentation and then find the color sensor. For your sensor, if you have a third-party sensor that's not Modern Robotics, all Modern Robotics ones are here. But if you have something that's not Modern Robotics, uh, then you can find it out on the specification for your sensor. If you don't, can't find that, call your manufacturer of the sensor uh, and see if they can send you the specification as far as the register layout for I2C. But it should be on the product page of all of these sensors. Uh, here we can see that these are the registers. So these are the registers we can choose from as far as to read. Um, there's also descriptions of these. So if we scroll down a little farther, we can see a description of the command register description of the commands themselves, of the color index, color reading. We're going to do color number. So color number is a number between 0 and 16. And that represents a section of the color spectrum. Um, up here, we can see that to read color number, it is register 0x04. So back in Core Device Discovery, on the Advanced tab, we're going to read register 0x04. Now we can either just, we can read it once, which if I click read, bring comes back zero. Put my hand in front of it, since my hand's a little red, I'm gonna click it, it'll say 10. 10 is the color for red, or the number for red. Um, we can also check on poll read. Poll read will continuously read the value and then bring back uh, the, the value that it sees. I could change this to 0x05, which I believe is a red reading. 
and then I can say pull read, and then I get an analog reading, so it's you know changing more and more as I move my hand in front of it. Um, so that's how you can read from a sensor. Is go look up the register for your sensor, type in the register, and then click on read. It only reads back one byte at a time, so the value you get back is going to be between 0 and 255. If your sensor is supposed to return a negative number, it's going to read, still interpret between 0 and 255, so you're going to have to know how to uh, convert some binary numbers to negative numbers when they should be. Uh, let's look at how to re, uh, write to a sensor. So with the color sensor, the command register is 0x03. Let's say we want to put it into, um, let's say, passive mode instead of active mode. You can see right now that my color sensor's LED is on, meaning that it is filtering out any ambient light. It's filtering out, for example, light from a color beacon. Uh, let's say I want to turn it into passive mode so that we can read that color beacon. I would say register 3, because that's command, uh, value of 1, value of 1, oops, ha! Silly Colton. I have to uncheck poll read because it's still reading. Uh, the green boxes you can enter text into. So it made it back green. Value of one, and then I'm going to say write, and it turned that LED off. If I want to put it back into uh, active mode, I can say the value of zero, and I can say write. I can also say instead of value of one, I could say value of zero uh, x zero one. It's the same thing. I can say write, and it'll turn that back off. Um, and again, it, to find that, read through the sensor documentation because here we can see command register is three and the command or the value that we want to send is either zero or one. Um, that's the same thing for if we want to change the frequency of the color sensor depending on what, com uh, what country you're in or if we want to do some calibration those commands are there as well. So you can find the description of all of that in the sensor documentation. Let's look at one more. Let's look at the uh, integrating gyro, integrating gyro, page 14, 9, 12, integrating gyro. Um, so you can see description of the sensor, what it's meant to do, the size of it, all that kind of stuff, and then the register layout. So we can read register firmware version, manufacturer code, ID. That's the same for all modern robotic sensors. That's register 0, 1, and 2. And then command is three, so that's things like calibration or reset, uh, heading, integrated Z. Uh, so it's first, I suppose I'll calibrate it first. So calibration uh, is 4E. So I'm going to go back here. Um, instead of address 3C, it's going to be address 20. Register 3, because that's command register. Calibration is 4E. I'm going to say right. And now you can't see it, but my. LED is solid on the gyro, and then it turned back into blinking. Um, so now I'm calibrated. And now if I want to read the heading, the heading is over two bytes. So we can't actually read the whole thing, but we can read enough to test it. Um, this heading data, LSB, MSB, means that the first byte, byte at register 4, is the least significant bit, or byte. The second byte at register 5 is the most significant byte. So think about numbers, let's say you have the number 10, the digit 1 is your most significant value, and the number 0 is your least significant value, um, because the, the 0 has le less significant, it's a lower magnitude. So what we actually want to do is read the lower magnitude value, the LSB, uh, the least significant bit, byte, because uh, that one's going to change with every degree, whereas the most significant byte only changes after you go past 250 uh, 255 degrees because then you got to add on your higher order. Uh, but play around with it. You can't break anything. So here, heading data, we're going to read 0x04. Just as a fair warning, I have um, moved the sensor slightly so it's not going to come back as 0. Uh, and I can just leave the value whatever because we're not going to write to or going to read. So I'm going to check pull read and that's bringing back the value in degrees. I can rotate this and for every degree, it is changing that value. Now if I go down to 1, I'll go to 0, and then it'll go, it should go to 359, but we can't do that in one byte, so it's going to go to 255, which is good, and then it'll start counting down again. Which is beautiful. That is how we can read and write to I2C devices 
using the core device interface.